Um, I'm going to invite our leader, our president, to come and address us. You're welcome, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Comrade Joy. Our people power, our power, our power. Our power. NUP, everywhere. everywhere. NUP. Please take your seats, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, I want to thank you members of the press for always responding to our call to such a factor in magnifying our voices and making sure the world gets to know what is happening in Uganda in real time. We don't take you for granted, friends, because we know you do your job under tough circumstances. Um, I also want to thank uh, Comrade Goretti for giving us such a a good, warm, warming prayer, and to remind all of us that we are all Ugandans, but again, we all belong to different ethnicities. We salute all of them, and it's important that we learn all the anthems. We are the national unity platform, and we should be seen to reflect every ethnicity. We should be seen to embrace every ethnicity. So I want to call upon all leaders and all members. In fact, I want to challenge them to learn all the anthems of all ethnicities. It is important that we are seen to be national and to be all embracing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome all of you from the year 2021. It was a bloody year. It was an aggressive year. It was a murderous year. Many of our comrades did not make it to 2022. Others entered 2022 either in hospital or in prison. We continue to stand with them. It's on the same note that I want to wish Comrade Honorable Zake a happy birthday. You are a symbol of resilience. You are a symbol of not giving up. We celebrate you, brother, and we love you wish you a happy birthday and many more years to come. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we can't go any further without giving a comment on the plight of our people, the continued abductions. Even as we speak right now, many of our people are being abducted. Many are being tortured. The, brutal the brutality continues. And it's not only for members of the National Unity Platform. As you all know, a renowned writer called Kakwenza Rukiravasaija was abducted and later it was established that he's being held by the state. He was held in communicado, reportedly tortured. Even when the court ordered for his unconditional release, the junta refused to release him. We all learned yesterday that he was arraigned before court without the knowledge of his lawyers and family, and remanded. I am convinced that they did all this to cover up for the torture marks. As you all remember, when I was arrested in Arua, I was badly tortured. My family and lawyers were kept away from seeing me. They injected me with all manner of steroids to ensure that the swelling goes down, to ensure that they kind of cover up for the torture that they had inflicted on me. So I'm convinced that they're doing all this to cover the shame. They don't want the journalists to have a look at Kakwenza so that the next time he shows up, there's no very clear evidence that he has been tortured. This is the same thing that has been done to comrades like Karanzi, who was beaten so badly and dropped into Chitalia like many others. We continue to stand with him. As you all know, and it has been very well mentioned by Comrade Honorable Senyonyi, that there has been double standards and criminality with security operatives. Many hundreds of our people are in prison 
for either wearing a t-shirt or any paraphernalia that belongs to NUP and people power. But most importantly, many people have been arrested and detained for wearing the beret that I'm wearing. Interestingly, even when I'm with 100 people and a few of us are wearing berets, they are going to arrest everybody apart from me. Why? Because they think that you are focusing more on me or the outstanding leaders and not the common people. We challenge them to arrest us and take us to court because they know that I wear this beret. They know that members of parliament wear this beret. They see us wearing it. But they cannot arrest us because they will not convict us. Because there is no law that bars us from wearing this beret. It is not theirs. And Honorable Senyonyi has eloquently challenged them to wear the beret if it is indeed theirs. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to mention something very important that is happening in our nation. Besides the stolen election and besides the shameless altering of the will of the people of Kayunga, where you all saw that all declaration forms were present and it was clear that Museveni, even after keeping me under house arrest, was resoundingly defeated. They altered the voice of the people and they announced a different candidate. This was supposed to be the lowest level of shamelessness. But as we always mention, Museveni has a bottomless pit that he descends in of shamelessness. You all have had the new proposal to take away the power of the people from electing their leader. Friends, it all begins like a joke. It all begins like a rumor. I want to take you back a little. When Museveni took over our country by force of arms, having lied to our people and conned them, he promised that they will rule for only four years and thereafter return power to a civilian government. Our people trusted them. But in 1989, Museveni using the NRC that he had controlled, just like he controls the parliament today, they again extended their mandate. They extended their rule for five more years without the mandate of the people of Uganda. Because we had just emerged from war, our people had not clearly understood the hypocrite, the liar, and the con man that Museveni is accepted. And it went on like that. But I'll tell you that every time Museveni and his team are planning to do something evil like that, they make sure that all voices of reason are eliminated. It is therefore raising questions why voices like Andrew Takome Kaira had to be eliminated by gunshots before that evil move. That was just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. In 1995, a constitution was promulgated. This is a constitution that was supposed to be durable. It's a constitution that was supposed to be superior. It's a constitution that every Ugandan was supposed to be under. But like all of you now realize, this is a constitution that Museveni never believed in. Every time the constitution bars Museveni from achieving or pursuing his selfish ends, he tears out the page that blocks him. In 2005, all of you remember that Museveni, using bribe and intimidation, had term limits removed from our constitution. And yes, you remember that many voices of reason died in the years preceding 2005. That was the first break. It was the first control that was removed from our constitution. Ugandans did not rise up as aggressively as they, as, as, as they should have raised up. Why? Because maybe they had hope. And indeed, many of us were still young and we did not know the kind of hypocrite and liar that Museveni is. But most importantly, people still had some hope. 
and indeed many people who called on radio said, well, he has changed the term limits, but he cannot change the years. People did not know how shameless Museveni can be. In 2017, ladies and gentlemen, it began, it began like a rumor, and indeed Museveni himself dismissed it and said those are nothing doers that are mentioning change of the constitution. Museveni is quoted on TV having said that a leader cannot be mentally sound after the age of 75. And he is quoted having been in interviewed by Jeff Koinage. He said, certainly not. I will not be president after the age of 75. Right now, we know that Museveni and his word are not to be trusted. In 2017, as many of you remember, Parliament was raided by the military, commanded by his son. Members of Parliament were brutalized. Soldiers came in the chamber and took the Parliament under siege. And still using bribe and intimidation, the Constitution was raped. The second break was removed from the Constitution. Museveni had his way of making himself president for life. At the age limit was removed from our constitution. And Museveni once again made himself eligible to stand for president. That provoked many Ugandans. And indeed, it motivated myself and many others to take him on. We took the matter to the people of Uganda. Having taken the matter to the people of Uganda, we told them that this was now about them. We told them they did not have hope in the parliament and neither did they have hope in the courts of law. Because like the parliament, the then speaker of parliament and the circumferent members of parliament belonging to the NRM party, having been used, the courts of law were used still. And that evil scheme was legitimized. We went to the polls. We called upon the people of Uganda. They responded massively and they voted Museveni out. I repeat, they voted Museveni out. But because Museveni, just like he does not respect the constitution or the law, does not respect the people of Uganda because the people of Uganda has no, have not yet asserted themselves the way they should assert themselves. So, having been defeated, Museveni did what he does best. Switched off the internet, took over the media, and intensified abductions. And yet again, Museveni imposed himself on the people of Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, many people thought that's the lowest that Museveni can go. But like I told you, the pit of shame that Museveni goes into every minute, every day, is bottomless. We went to Kayunga, and Kayunga exposed the detail of what happened in the 2021 election. If anybody had any doubt about Museveni's shamelessness, about Museveni's undermining of democracy, Kayunga put it on the table for everybody to see. All of us thought that's the lowest that Museveni went. Having been rejected by the people of Uganda, he tried to make us hate elections. He tried to make us despise elections. And he tried to make us, you know, reject elections. We came and told Museveni that we will not stop calling upon the people of Uganda to assert themselves through elections. He heard us and he got scared. And guess what? Like we told you in the past, that one day Museveni will say there are no more elections. Some people thought I was lying, but I told you, and you journalists can quote me, and you can bring that video evidence, because we told you, well, it did not take as long as we thought it would take. Now, all of you have heard that Museveni and his ilk are moving to take away the power of the people of Uganda and their mandate to elect their president. You all know, ladies and gentlemen, that no position of leadership 
matters in Uganda for as long as Museveni is in power. And all of you know that Museveni is rejected and was rejected long ago by the people of Uganda. He used COVID to hide that, but the people asserted themselves. And now, he cannot take the shame anymore. Because he knows that even if he uses the military and other machinations to impose himself on the people of Uganda, the international community watches him. He got out of the 2021 election bruised. The whole world saw Museveni for the military dictator that he is, and he cannot take that anymore. And that is why he wants to scrap elections. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you, Ugandans from every corner of Uganda and from all over the world, that this is the last opportunity that you have. I told you in 2017 that you need to rise up and defend the constitution before the constitution is too weak to defend you. The constitution has been demoralized. It has been raped and defiled numerous times. Now it is upon the people of Uganda. So it is now that I want to call upon all of you, the people of Uganda. We cannot leave this to only the members of parliament. We cannot only leave this to the mayors or the elected leaders. It is everybody's responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. All of you now, it's no longer a secret that Museveni is trying to impose his spoiled son on the people of Uganda. And it is clear to him that the people of Uganda have rejected him and his spoiled son. It is clear that they stand no chance in a democratic election. But because he has always been using the parliament, which he bribes and intimidates, and there are fewer people, he wants to take that to the parliament. I'm telling you today, that will not work. I'm telling you, Mr. Museveni, that will not work. The people of Uganda, as per the constitution, no matter how many times you've abrogated it, the people of Uganda still have the power over their destiny. And the power that you're trying to take away from the people will not be as easy as you think it will be. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we are not only going to talk about this. We can only remind you, we can only open your eyes, but remember that this is your country. Slowly by slowly, you are being enslaved in your own country. Just like you open your eyes to the realities from 2017 to 2021, I'm calling upon all of you, ladies and gentlemen, to take this upon yourselves. Whether you are MP or mayor or councillor, whether you're ordinary citizen, whether you're farmer, student, young or old, rich or poor, this is about you. Nobody is safe in a dictatorship. I want to say to you once more, like I said to you in 2017, rise up and defend the constitution before the constitution is too weak to defend you. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for God and my country.